And the next speaker is that could be uh, from McGill University. And the title is the generation of bundle modeling. Correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's a great pleasure to, to talk here at the uh, event in, on the roster. Oscar, of course, been playing many years. Uh, he's been a source of ideas, energy, <laughs> and uh, initiative uh, that we've all benefited from. Uh, not only the, the Spanish community, but the, the international community in general, and uh, these are the that we, we underline the, uh, the first 40 year of his career, of course, continues. And, uh, and so, uh, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a very good pleasure to come uh, be here. And of course, the fact that it's just been delayed a bit is simply a sign of his attorney view. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, the generations of um, bundle modular. And uh, everything here is on a, a Riemann surface of just G. And the the uh, initial part of the talk relates to SL two bundles, SU two connections, um, but uh, afterwards there's SLN, of course. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> So uh, the and the latter part, the, the, the recent work is is done with the uh, human mind. Okay. Um, so we have this this classical uh, correspondence, and I'll just write it for myself too. Oh, no, Stable. Um, so the Narasim and Sashabi correspondence with uh, via SU2 uh, connections. Sigma. And um, And of course, these, once you integrate them, become uh, representations. Of the uh, group. So the, the um, of the, the surface group into, into SU2. So the story starts um, quite a few years ago. Uh, with some very nice work of uh, Lisa Jeffrey and Jonathan Weitzman. Um, but what they were using were the Goldman flows on uh, representations or on, on connections. Um, and the way the, the, the Goldman flow works is that if you have a little you choose, um, so here's a, a bit of your, your Riemann surface, and you have a, a closed loop, your your flat connection or your representation will give you some polynomial around the loop. And um, the uh, you deform either the connection or the representation that basically you think of the representation um, in the following way. If you have a, a path crossing this loop going that away, um, you take a, an element new belonging to the stabilizer uh, C, and uh, the, the parallel transport by B 
gets modified to, I don't know, something like U times B, and the parallel transport by A gets um, modified by A new inverse. And this defines a, a an action on the the uh, the uh, space of representations. So you can also think of this in terms of, of taking sort of a flat basis for your connection, and then modifying by putting a little bump function of, of uh, modifying the connection of the collar around around the seat. So you get these flows, and um, what what Jeffrey and Weitzman. Uh, Weitzman will use or remark is that these are Hamiltonian. Um, so um, <clears throat> if I take this holonomy C and write it as G, um, I guess E to the theta, E to the minus I theta. The inverse. Um, <clears throat> if I take the Hamiltonian flow, so is the to C to the, uh, I think it's close on data. Then um, I get a, uh, a, uh, a Hamiltonian flow that, that reproduces these, these things. And the uh, nice thing is that C. And C prime uh, is joined. We do that. Um, <clears throat> Hamiltonians plus something. Okay, so you get you get those now. Um, if you're given a, a Riemann surface of the genus G. Um, let's see how should I do this right here, there, that, um, <clears throat> you'll get um, 2G minus two uh, pairs of pants or premium, and 3G minus three cuts. Okay, and um, <clears throat> well, for, for SU2, the uh, moduli is um, 6G minus C it's dimensional. You still have to close for, for higher um, rank, but you don't have enough of them. That's the issue. But for SU2, you're getting half the dimension of um, the space of Hamiltonian flows. So you're getting a completely integrable system. But, so completely integrable system, integrable, but things, things go wrong when C for SU2 is central. So C is plus or minus the identity. Um, you're still getting the Hamiltonian B1 or minus one, so that's good. Um, but it's no longer smooth. Um, but sort of problems with um, C equal plus or minus the identity. In other words, uh, for a general group, what would be seen on regular? Okay, the stabilizer is too big. The, the actions, you know, in terms of, of coming in to see from different directions is still defined and things, things go wrong. <clears throat> okay, but you still get a moment, moment polytope. Um, Uh, 
<laughs> we still get a moment or two, and um, well, what, what uh, Jeffrey and Weinsman do is they uh, they uh, <coughs> use uh, Bohr Sommerfeld. quantization which basically is counting uh, integer points in the polar code it's called delta delta okay and uh, lo and behold you get the the uh, the Berlin account for the Quantization of the moduli space. And this is kind of interesting. You see, if, the, if it were toric on the nose, um, you'd be done. You have a proof. Instead, you have this heuristic. Um, just, you know, toric, if you're counting sections for a toric variety, you're basically on a line button counting integer points. And this is this is not the not the case here. Okay, so then, um, but you're sort of almost there. And the question was, was what? Um, <clears throat> um, so, what would the historic variety be? Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, it's an alternate, alternate way of thinking of the space of connections. Um, so think of connections differently. Uh, doing, um, connections on a uh, well, on a set of premiums. Okay, pair the pants. Okay, so here, here is uh, one one premium. Um, <clears throat> so you you have to for the glue you do to sort of work effectively. You need some uh, trivialization that the and here, um, etc. And uh, then you can define parallel transport in a unique way. So it's, um, and you can take um, parallel transport around the, the circle at the end. And that works too. And you take CI belonging to the maximal torus of the group. So the end here is SU2. Um, the A's are arbitrary in, in SU2. And you have one relation which looks uh, roughly like. Uh, <clears throat> and then the gluing, what does it amount to? Um, um, and um, well, we've got two. Two trillions. And you see <clears throat> this this moduli the space really has a has a torus action, and it's in fact um, you get one action for each circle, and it's it's basically you just conjugate the a's before and after by 
porous elements acting on these things. So, um, something like this. Um, this works beautifully, but again, as long as the, the CIs are not uh, sensitive. And your gluing here is in fact just a sort of simultaneously. The space is symplectic, again, when the CIs are not simple. Um, <clears throat> um, and the reduction, it's a symplectic reduction to blue by the diagonal torus or the anti-diagonal torus in the, the, you've got one torus here, you've got one torus there, and you take the diagonal. It's, it's basically just turning both trivializations at the same time. So the blue is identical. So that's your you're seeing it's a symplectic reduction. You match the the polynomial. So there's your, your moment condition, and then you quotient by this equivalence. So as I said, it works well. It's the space is symplectic as long as the CIs are not central. Okay. Um, well, then, uh, together with um, with Lisa and Raya Shamar, we Worked out something that would deal with this this uh, this non centrality, and um, and it came in the context of the even more general construction, which is an imploded cross section. <clears throat> um, so there's a paper of Jeffrey, Samara, and Gilman doing this in the symplectic category, and we were doing it in the, the quasi-Hamiltonian setup for these particular spaces. And um, so um, in this picture, for, for any Riemann surface in the back. Um, there's a construction of Alexeyev, Malkin, and Meinrankin, where they're doing the, the, the they define quasi Hamiltonian spaces. So again, you've got trivialization at the end, an arbitrary polonomy now around the end. And the similar things with the trivialization. And representations and so on. Um, and so what they do is you you uh, um, to implode, what you do is you take C, which is now an arbitrary element of your compact group, um, take C belonging to the uh, fundamental alcohol. So not just the torus. But a, yeah, a sort of normalized bit inside the torus. Okay. And um, <clears throat> you quotient. This is a little bit weird, but it's what works um, in a sort of varying way by the, not the stabilizer of the uh, of C, but its commutator group. So it leaves you with the linabelian bit if it's there, but for for um, SU2, you notice that if, if uh, C is regular, um, this is just the identity, because you're taking the commutator subgroup of a torus. And if C is equal to plus or minus the identity, well, it's all of SU2. Okay, so it's this weird thing where you're taking, for example, if you do it for this space, CI is now living in the, in the alcove, 
and you just when C is plus or minus the identity, everything just you're, you're collapsing by uh, the action of the SU2. And this this gives you um, a space on these open spaces. It gives you a, you a master space for parabolic structures. So you can fit all parabolic structures into this, which is nice. Um, because your, your weight is now living in the alcove. Okay, so that's good. Um, some odd stuff happens actually. Um, so when your weight is zero, well, you're just getting you're getting the trivial representation from him and it just disappears as if it wasn't there. Um, when you're hitting the other side of the alcove, so here the, the well, for instance, do the alcove somewhat similar, simpler in that case. Okay. Uh, what's happening in in the um, well, you're you're getting you're getting a minus minus the identity here, and you're, you're getting essentially the, the bundles, this natural shift of the, the, the way you describe bundles, say of odd degree. It appears here as minus one. Um, what's nicer is that these things actually have holomorphic interpretation. So you're saying you're getting a master space with palabrotic structures, and you can interpret this holomorphically. Um, <clears throat> um, so these these spaces uh, space has a homomorphic structure, and um, <clears throat> what it is is a. Um, You're getting out of narrow and society, you're getting a the flat bundle gives you a holomorphic bundle. That's easy. Um, these frames at the end, you see, normally you're getting a parabolic structure, but you're getting more, and what you're getting is that trivialization basically. Um, so at the punctures, um, for SL2, you know, um, not only not not a, a line, which would be the parabolic structure again, um, but actually an element of um, well, I suppose the jewel of the bundle. Okay, so the kernel of that element, if it's not there, it gives you the line. Um, <clears throat> If the element zero, it gives you nothing. So it gives you the trivial bundle and you have trivial holonomy and everything works. If you're going to the other end, which you tend to think of as, as this element going to infinity, what's actually happening is the bundle is twisting. And as you had minus one holonomy here and getting bundles of odd degree, what's happening in the holomorphic context is the torsion is being allowed in the bundle. The bundle pops off a little the scene at the, at the origin, at the, at the puncture, and you're left with a bundle of one degree less. So you're getting this interpolation in this master space between bundles of degree zero and bundles of degree minus one. So it's, it's kind of an interesting thing. And again, with a, a suitable notion of the SL2 structure to generate. So I don't want to go into that. But you're getting these spaces. They're associated to puncture agreement surfaces. You can do this for a trillion. And so, um, do this for a trillion. And uh, for K trillions, uh, 
Um, in this construction, opinion, and you get at least for SL2C or SU2, depending on which way you're looking at it, you get a complex projected free space as your moduli. Okay, with the standard action of um, C3 or C star cube, depending on how you want to think of this. You want to think of it holomorphically, you take C star. You know, you it, uh, so you're getting these, these uh, plus one actions. And so you can take the trillion spaces and glue them, and they will correspond to either symplectic reductions by T3 or holomorphic quotients by C star for the three at each, well, a T and C star at each of the, um, each of the gluing points. So you're, you, uh, And uh, you've got your T action here, your T action here. And now you've got on the cigar space and you the quotient. Now, what it's doing when the colonomy is regular is exactly what we have doing before. When C is plus or minus the identity, it's basically doing nothing. The, the action is trivial, and you just sort of got these two points sitting next to each other, and the bundles are just sort of saying hello to each other, but nothing, nothing's happening. So you, you've got this, this sort of thing that is, is on a generic set, when you do this gluing, it's sort of like bundles, but the degenerations are a little bit different. And that's that's what allows you to make it make it toric. So you're getting a getting a moduli space. Um, <clears throat> uh, associated to um, <clears throat> well, to a sort of balloon animal. Um, so I'll just draw a genus. I need a new graphics package. <laughs> So that's a genus two surface. You glue two trillions and you collapse these things. So in other words, you're seeing a moduli space is naturally associated with a toric with a nodal degeneration in your curve. Okay, so it's there. It's your candidate for a limit object. And the question is, is it a limit object? It's it's what it should be. You sort of know the answer, but you know, not quite sure how to get there. So that's that's the more recent word. And it comes in the in the context of a very nice uh, paper of Harada and uh, Cave, so following on work of, of Cave and Polanski. Um, so the picture is as follows: you, you've got a. Um, a space that's lying over a disk. Um, the central fiber is poorly. It's a family of, of uh, projective varieties, and you know there's some usual things that are all living in projective space. This is a sort of common Taylor form, and so on. Um, and it's a degeneration in the sense that xt. Is isomorphic to xt prime for t t prime different from zero. So that's something special is happening in the origin. And what they're saying is that the, the Hamiltonians actually extend outwards. Um, 
Um, and so you get a completely integral system. Um, XD, but only, well, generically smooth Hamiltonians. And they're continuous. Okay, so they'll extend outwards continuously in the novel market, but almost, but not, sorry, smoothly. And there's a, there's a sort of um, <clears throat> polymorphic version with Gabe and Pavansky coming earlier on, but then they got some similar things for the polar structure. Okay, so this is the question is can you do this by deformation? And that's what you know and I were, were looking at. Um, <clears throat> so what do you want? You want um, you may want basically things to work both symplectically and polymorphically. Work um, for a degeneration and both symplectically and homomorphically. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for degeneration. Okay, good. So, um, So symplectically, um, what you should be seeing is um, that as you're you're squeezing um, a cycle with holonomy alpha around it, you want it to sort of go to uh, two punctured. Uh, this is this will be glued together. Um, and you want uh, sort of quantity alpha around this, and because you're sort of changing the orientations, uh, okay, so that's the the uh, you want, and then you want uh, holomorphically. Um, well, what you want is the bundle, the data of a bundle, to somehow become the data of a bundle plus these weighted parabolic structures. And this, this limit. So what have you got? Well, you've got a, a model for the curve. Um, that's a sort of natural one. You just uh, so I'll do the degeneration just for one one cycle. Um, so, so for one point or for one cycle. So what I'm doing is remember I'm just taking a cycle and collapsing it. So I'll look at C2 um, and considering the family of curves X, Y equals E. And, uh, T different from zero, it's smooth and at T equals zero, you got a curve like that and you've got a cycle here and this T is <clears throat> going to zero, it's, it's collapsing. Um, so that's your, your local model for the curve. And so you somehow want to collapse the, um, the flat connection. Um, so again, your, your, um, 
um, or a flat connection. As long as we pause where the spell connection would be an X or a CT. I'm <laughs> sure. This is my inheritance. Um, <clears throat> So for black connection, what you want to do is just take a um, an ambient connection as a local model. Um, well, unitary um, So I'll just put alpha. this is a Um, okay, so this is singular along the axes. Um, holomorphically, um, you get alpha over two, and uh, dx over x minus b1 over y. Now this might look a bit strange because you're degenerating to uh, the curve, but then this thing has singularities along the curve. But what you're doing, in fact, is restricting to these curves and then taking limit, and then you just get something that has poles. So along the, the boundaries, you get poles. Um, Get um, at equal zero local uh, connections. Um, with um, all um, <clears throat> The two puncture points and opposite along which is, is just right as I know if you're changing the natural directions for the curves. And this is what you just take this and restrict it. That's what you get. So you can take one of these things and basically glue it into an isomonodromic deformation of the connection, and you'll get a family that's degenerating. So this in family, it's it's obvious, and it won't work. Um, do this. Um, um, okay, maybe glue this into a plane. Fixed. Um, Um, okay, you can do it more more generally, and basically you're seeing that the least is a base of representations. You're getting a good some good limit. Um, <clears throat> so as I was saying, the the uh, you've got your your sort of little piece of curve here. You glue in something fixed to the outside, and then you. Uh, take this to some nodal limit. And so the, the deformation works pretty well, and you see you're getting a connection to the pole at the end, which of course corresponds well to the sort of idea of parallel structure. Okay. Um, the holomorphic bit is a little bit more involved because there you you're dealing with um a uh, <clears throat> a 
seemingly two different pieces of data, or there's, there's this extra piece of data, a flag of the singularities that you have to worry about. Um, so holomorphically, be uh, different from zero, basically just on a bundle, and uh, t equals zero, one bundle plus pi. Okay, so, um, and I must admit, I for years I've been looking at the, the sort of proof of the, the meta Sashadri parabolic structures. And it always looks somewhat artificial. And so this forces, at least a, a certain, on my part, so we rethink it. I don't know what you know, you can do this all along, but um, see, well, what is this thing? And if you look at, at for example, Bikow's papers carefully, you see that basically underlying this thing is. You know, you've got flag with a a um, these weights um, associated to it, and you know what's the link? And it turns out that the the at least the convenient way yeah. to think about this is this is a sort of I'll use the word singular. The bar operator. In other words, your operators, and when you write it in sort of, well, I suppose, unitary trivialization, you're not thinking of this standard D bar operator, but with one with, with some, some holes. So you're thinking of basically an operator that looks like uh, these are bar plus um, alpha. Z bar over Z bar. Okay. And what this is giving to you when you when you solve for the, the equation, it's giving you a, a things that, that blow up. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they they uh, they give you a flag because you get different growth rates. And so once you sort of renormalize that, you get the standard description. I mean, this description has to be correct, so it's not. But it's a different way of thinking about it. And so in this context, what you end up doing for the is again looking at this family of curves in some ambient context. And um, writing a, a uh, You want a singular um, e bar operator um, on well C two, and it's sort of more convenient if you blow up, blow up the origin, and so you've got a sort of transform that tilde equals zero, y tilde equals zero. You've got the singular fiber, which is where all the exciting stuff is happening. And you put a, a uh, an operator on this that looks like e bar plus bar And here the same thing with a minus. And so that builds in growth rates gives you a flag. Uh, you have to frame both above and below, and then the framing is, when you take a direct image, in fact, you're, you're taking a, the way it's set up, you, you, you um, take a direct image, not of the, the bundle, but the bundle twisted by this divisor. And so you're getting, in fact, a sort of something that's a bit like an ideal sheet below, you, you push it down, and then the trivializations get you to Give you the, the right identifications that would correspond in a symplectic context to this gluing operation. 
So it's, it looks a little bit incongruous that way, but and fortunately, it's a convenient time for me to stop. <laughs> so uh, so is the end conclusion that you have to the issues the and the virus is the complex structure. Did you hear the question? Well, you, you've got a smooth family, you've got a, a holomorphic family. Curve. Which I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat the question? I'm just asking what is the result and product of this construction in terms of is it a family? Is it, is it a kilo manifold or family of kilo manifolds? Which even at the t equal to zero is also a kilo manifold. Yes, with singularities. Yes, but if you did it in the twisted case, there would be no singularities. So you pump it to begin with and put on the minus one around the pump. Well, that holonomy minus one is is sort of included, like I said, in this this reduced. Things all the, the sort of minus one holonomies get translated into holomorphic, but with torsion. You, in the GIT problem, what you've got is is a it's a semi-stable. Those those points become semi-stable, and so there's there's an orbit. And the, the orbit looks like just bundles with flag and things like that. But because your 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 weights, see in the in the standard. Meta such factory construction, they're very careful to keep their weights within an integer interval. This torsion case corresponds to the case when the, the interval is one. Mm -hmm. And so you can either think of the, the uh, this thing is sort of getting this with torsion, or take one of the weights, shift it by plus one, then you're back into a smaller interval that you've twisted your bundle. So it's, it's a bit of a dictionary. You can show that for, with stability, the, the, the torsion pieces are all very standard. It's, but it's it's interesting that you see, instead of this this sort of canonical minus one in construction, you get bundles of odd degree, for example. You, you can just think of it as bundles of odd degree plus a little torsion piece that pops up the degree. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just that if I look at it from a completely smooth point of view, the modular space of flat connections don't change at all. But somehow you're putting new space over. The yeah, because you're 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 building in that degeneration in the implosions, basically. Mm -hmm. It it goes over smoothly. This modular space you're getting in the limit is is kind of weird. Holomorphically, you're not getting an identification of the fibers when you push down. You're getting identification of top exterior powers of the sub quotients of the flag. So it's it's a it's a sort of thing that's sort of partially glued. Um, symplectically, as long as you're you're at a regular point, then you are getting glued because you have orthogonal complements. So if I glue the subquotients, I'm done. Um, but then if you go to points that aren't regular in the homonymy, then it's it's again it's just the top exterior power that you're doing. So it's not. Thanks. Does this have any connection with the um, symplectic contraction construction of not the same project now? It's sort of a way of degenerating. Well, it is. The, 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 I mean, the, the, this paper of, of Gilman, Jeffrey, and Samar. Like I said, this is the quasi Hamiltonian version mm -hmm. of that. So if that was linked to the other one, I would. Thank you for your talk. Uh, my question is maybe a bit technical, it's related to the picture you just made, but uh, coming to the master space of parabolic structures, yeah. typically there are problems with the, some walls in the other corner, okay? which may bring you maybe to another class of objects, parabolic numbers. Mm. 
but somehow there's this it's another way, yeah, another way of thinking of it yeah mm -hmm. so this problem with some walls where the eigenvalues of the uh, adjoint of of the weight in the in maximum value one that's precisely this this is this uh it's this issue taking the problem right? yeah it's the far wall from the origin okay. in the alcove that's that's giving you the way and sort of yeah, in this picture, it's clear I was actually going ahead in the uh, maybe the higher rank situation where you you uh, you were translating the rank two, but somehow you have done this for arbitrary for rank. S S L S L. You know, yeah. Yes, yeah. This problem appears there also, right? Yeah. I mean, this, this one. But it's it's with other groups. It's the you know the usual problem is things aren't entirely linear. Mm -hmm. Because it's no longer the linear group. Sorry. So, you can deal with the parabolic bundles. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but but uh, this this particular construction, I don't see yeah. it. Even in, sure. say, a problem or something. Mm -hmm. so, questions? Comments? Kevin, let's thank that thing.